Tanks were just getting back into position, but would you believe it? Kurulas managed to make a kill. I'm not sure what it is. We've just got back here. Johan. Yes, thanks very much, Johan. Well done. So Johan called us back and said she's called us back and said she's just made a kill. So now we just need to try and find a spot where we can sneak in a visual. So hold on a second. And it might be an award with a full moon in the background. No problem. Johan's just got himself into a good spot. It's okay for us once we peek through. Okay there, Andrew. Yep, I'm in the bushes, but it's all good. Wow, look at this, folks. It looks like a steer buck that she's managed to kill. And as we arrived, we saw a hyena already on the scene just minutes after she made the kill. So the hyena slunk off, and Karula very cleverly managed to get herself into a position. that allowed her to hoist the kill up this marula tree very quickly. And you can see she might still be suffocating the stand, but just to make sure it's dead, I think she still has it in the chokehold. You can see how heavily she's panting. She's obviously exhausted from stalking and catching the animal, dragging it here. Who knows how far she had to get it through this thick bush before she knew she could get to the safety of this marula tree. Here we can see her just taking her first breaths. I guess since she's made this kill. What a beautiful sight. And now I'm going to try my monitor one last time, and it's working, thankfully. What a beautiful shot that Andrew's showing you. See, the moon's just coming up now. Oh, look at that. See, the moon is just coming up to the fork in this marula tree, and you couldn't script a sighting like this, you really couldn't. This is just too beautiful for words. I'm going to try and snap off one or two photographs. Wow, that's amazing. Absolutely beautiful. You can see the blood dripping down. It could be a combination of the Steenbuck's blood, but also her saliva from when she had it in the chokehold. Possibly looking for safer places to hoist her to wedge this kill because it's not in a very suitable fork here. And I think she's seen this fork just up towards us, if you follow this branch towards us, Andrew, to the right. I think she's eyeing out this fork over there, where she may well decide to move this kill, because where it's balancing now, it's quite precarious and could easily drop down, and she knows if it does drop down, that hyena will still be lurking around in the shadows that we saw briefly as we arrived here. And if a hyena hears a thud, it will be in at the base of this tree in seconds. Well, our decision to leave her in order for her to hunt maybe did make a difference, maybe it didn't. But if there were two vehicles crashing after her, it may well, we may well have chased away this stand buck. And look at the moon rising up in the fork of this tree, just absolutely perfect. I think she's just also getting her breath back. 
Oh, here's the hyena right at the base of the tree here on our right. And it's going to be very difficult for Andrew to show it to you because we're surrounded by very, very thick vegetation. And I think I'm in the way. Yeah, you'll have to shine this, buddy. Okay. There we go. Sorry, I thought your hand was shining. So here's the hyena sniffing the saliva and blood that's been dripping down, but also there's just so much to watch because now the leopard's moving right above us. So maybe go up to the leopard. Is that your limit there, Andrew? Hey. Okay. Is that your vertical limit? Where you the bushes your problem now, the bushes above you are your problem. Look at this folks, the full moon or almost the full moon rising. A beautiful female leopard in this marula tree. A hyena below. Two hyenas below. Now oh, there's another one. And it's just slunk off the one in front of your hun's vehicle. And here's the other one at the base of the tree. Really is painting a picture of what's going on exactly here, and this is a very unique sighting that I hope you are all enjoying as much as we are here. Yes, now the hyena are vocalizing. This will be really wonderful if these ones right here vocalize because it's an incredible audio to hear from close up. The ones that we could hear calling are quite far away. I would say half a mile or a mile. And you can see Karuna looking down at the hyena. She's got nothing to worry about when she's up there. Just phenomenal to, for us to be able to see this interaction and ongoing between two of the supreme predators of this area, the leopard and the hyena. Oh, she's somehow very surprisingly managed to make herself comfortable in a fairly awkward position here. She's literally hugging onto the branch with her front legs. Right, it's back at the base of this tree and they'll continue to sniff about, hoping to get little tidbits, or ideally hoping for the kill to drop from the tree, which does happen. And would have happened especially more often to Karula when she had her two sons, Kunyuma and Quarantine with her. because they weren't quite as, or any youngster wouldn't be quite as aware of the risk of dropping a kill down to the ground with hyena around. So it's a frustration that adult female leopards have to deal with when they do have cubs. Andrew, can you see this here? Sadly, we are on a very thick bush, but there is a hyena just meters away from us here. But we've got no meat in our vehicle. And even if we did, we wouldn't be showing it to you. Not because we don't like it, but because it's unethical to feed the animals. But it did come up and sniff us a little bit. 
Well, after all that action, I need to take a little moment to recap. We had kind of got halfway back to where we think the road was when Johan got a hold of us and told us that we should probably turn around and come back straight into the middle of this thick block, which we did as hastily as we could. Because she doesn't seem hugely hungry at the moment, I'm guessing that she may take some time before she starts to feed. She's going to get her breath back and is in no rush to get to the feeding. And that's the beautiful moon, a close-up of the beautiful moon that is rising in what has turned out to be a really spectacular sighting. The moon has really been the cherry on the cake. And simply the fact that with all this thick vegetation we got into a position where we could have the moon in the shot was a great fortune. Certainly will be interesting to know if she will be here in the morning. I think she will. I think she will, considering that she's not extremely hungry at the moment, I don't think she would consume this whole meal in one sitting. Could be wrong. If she was hungry, she would almost certainly finish it off in the evening, I'm guessing. But because she isn't, there's a small chance we'll be able to find her again in the morning. So that's great prospects for the next drive. Finding the spots again after having left in the dark is going to be our major challenge regarding this. I hope you all enjoyed that great camera work from Andrew. That was a beautiful sequence. Pity her head wasn't facing us to finish off the shot from tip to toe. It's still a magical shot. Interesting to see how long she manages to stay in that position that really doesn't look too comfortable. Sadly, the marula tree that she's chosen, or she was forced to choose, due to the hyena who were on the scene very quickly, it could have been that the steenbuck let off an alarm or a squeal of distress that would have brought, in, brought them in so quickly. I'm guessing that is what attracted them so quickly some kind of a distress call that the Steinbuck may have let out. <coughs> and it is sad and brutal to see an animal that's just had its life taken by a leopard, but it's a necessity in nature. And Without this food, the leopard would obviously not survive. So, 
harsh but necessary reality of shale. The hyena have seemed to stop slinking around, but what they may well be doing is lying up nearby. As I said that, I heard a little rustle of leaves, so they could still be sniffing about, but not as intensively. They've established what's going on, and now we'll wait patiently for any tip bits to fall down. So if you go down to feed, uh, yeah, yeah, it can okay. work out quite nicely. So, just to keep everyone in the loop, the moon, as Andrew said, is going to pop up in the V or the fork that the stem buck is lying in. So it's going to come fairly perfectly rising over the stem buck. And if, like Andrew says, she comes down and feeds, it will make for some incredible shots. Here comes the moon now. Just see it peeking over the right hand fork that the stand bucks lying in. Is she gonna do it or is she just repositioning? Yes, repositioning it appears, still getting her breath back in, in no hurry to start feeding. That is the beauty of being a leopard. They are one of the few predators out here in Africa that has the joy of hoarding their kills and feeding at a leisurely pace. Here's the hyena at the base of the tree again. So still slinking about and sniffing around. looking up, hopingly, at the stern back, and imagine how tough it is seeing it, tasting the water out there, but having no means of getting to it, especially with an incredibly powerful nose that they have, it must be torture. Oh, well, Karuna's got into an interesting position now, a bit better for a face shot. Certainly. I'm just hard to believe that after just making a kill, that adrenaline and that excitement, just minutes ago, having two or three hyena below you, that you still can sleep. Hard to believe, really. But as I said, she knows once she's up in the tree, she does have this unique safety that, again, most of the predators, or all of the major predators in Africa, don't have. Wild dog, cheetah, lion will eat for kills as quickly as possible. I guess lions, to a degree, can take their time. But they are always pestered by hyena and vultures possibly other lion while they wait. So they still have a bit of a responsibility to defend their kill. Whereas this leopard's got nothing to really worry about. Lions, I guess, could come and try and climb this tree, but they're not good climbers and she could possibly abandon the kill, which is what they're mainly looking for. And she herself could climb out onto the thinner branches of this tree where the lions wouldn't be comfortable in getting to. So almost complete safety up there. And here's the moon. Almost fully popped out into this next fork of the tree. What an incredible sight.
Well, folks, like I've said, it could be hours until she starts to feed on this kill. So, I think it is time for us to head back and find the road and get back to camp and be fresh for an early start and come straight back here in the morning and see what she's up to. Because at the moment, as you can see, it doesn't appear that she's going to be feeding anytime soon. Uh, why should she? There's absolutely no reason for her to rush in and finish this kill. But Thanks for staying on and it is always great when we get to stay over time when something special and unique happens like this. So I hope you've enjoyed the extra long broadcast this evening and what a magical way to finish another good day here on Safari Live. So to Alex in final control and Mark and Brian on the other vehicle. Brian, you did a great job on camera with me this afternoon. A big thank you for making everything work out. Excuse me. And to the viewers again, Without you, this wouldn't happen. So thanks for following us on these live safaris. And I look forward to tomorrow morning's adventure. It'll be myself and Brent out again on the two different vehicles. So until then, have a good evening and enjoy this last shot of Karula before we close.